So we are going to look at Genesis chapter 21. And the verse number one, it says, And the Lord visited Zerah, as he had said, and the Lord did for Zerah he had spoken. For Zerah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Now here in the first verse it says, And the Lord visited Zerah as he had said. Now, uh, and then he says, And the Lord did for Zerah, as he had spoken. There are two things happening here. Number one, the Lord visited Sarah. And secondly, as he did as he had spoken. Now, in the earlier chapter, we saw that I will visit you. And by the next time when I visit you, you will have a son. And so, when the Lord said he will do, he is a promise-keeping God. The heavens and the earth may pass away, but Bible says, my words will not change. His words endures forever. And so here, the Bible says, and the Lord visited Sarah as he said. Now, in, in many Pentecostal uh, people, and in many, many people who always says, you know, even in many, many religions also says, when God visits you, you have to be careful. God will punish you. Okay, in some religion it says they saw a snake outside the house. They say a snake came so because you have done something wrong. So the snake is going to attack you or snake is going to bite you. Be careful. Snake is God and snake can bite you. Snake can attack you. Now, some you need to understand something. I have a son and I have a daughter and I have a father in India. When I visit my father in India, he's not God, he's my father. When I visit my father in India, he is not waiting there with a stick in his hand to beat me. Or if he visit me here, he is not coming here to rebuke me, shout at me, or hit me. When a father visits a son, the son or the daughter, they are excited why they know that the father is going to bring gifts. Now, many people say when the Lord visits you, you know, in some culture, they say, ah, be very careful. The Lord will visit you. The Lord will visit you. That means the Lord is going to punish you. No, I strongly will say, and I believe and I will say, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Number one. Number two, Bible say, Jesus said, so clearly that we are the children of Mother Most High. We are the children of God. Also, we need to know when we accept Jesus, he has given us the power to call to be called the children of God. Now, when the Lord visits us, we are expecting gifts from him, not tormentation. When the Lord visits us, we are expecting blessings from him, not that curses. When the Lord visits us, we are expecting something supernatural and blessing happening in our life, not bad things. Now, when the Lord is, why I'm saying this? Because when the Lord visited Sarah, now Sarah is the daughter of the Lord. This is where we need to know. We are the children of the Most High. Now, so when the Lord visits you, you know, in, um, in um, Psalms 91, it says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And in, in, when it comes down, it says, thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand on your right hand, but will not come near you. Now, all these places, we see our God is a good God. We don't see him as a punishing God. He's a good God. Now, here the Bible says, Sarah, the Lord visited Sarah. And he did for Sarah as he had spoken. So when the Lord visited Sarah, what the Lord did, Lord completed the promise of what the Lord has given to him, given to her. Now, the promise was not given to Sarah. The promise was given to Abraham. And the promise was given to Sarah through Abraham. But when the Lord visits you, this is where you need to understand 
Many people say, Lord, visit me. Visiting is good. But I pray that it is good for us to dwell in his presence forever than getting a visit from him. Now, every time he visits, he gives you gifts. Now, for Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age. Now, here it says, Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age. At the set time of which God has spoken to him. And in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, Bible says, at the appointed time, or clearly says, when the fullness of time come, God sent his son, born of a virgin. Now, that is an appointed time. The appointed time. Now, when we look into Genesis, in Genesis, God spoke to Adam and Eve and said, the, son, the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. Now, that appointed time came when Jesus came. And, and that's the reason there are two words connected. That's the reason there are two words connected. In Genesis, the God spoke to Elohim. The God spoke to Adam and Eve said, um, the seed of the woman will bruise the or destroy, crush the head of the serpent. That happens when we see that in Galatians. In Galatians, they say, and, and when the fullness of time came, that means for God, there is a time frame for everything. So also we see that um, the vision waits an appointed time. So all these places, we see that when God says something, he keeps a time frame, a time limit to it. And he works perfectly on it. Now, at the set time means when the time was right, when the time was correct, what did it do? God, uh, God gave him, gave them a son. And Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Zerah bore to him, Isaac. Now, the meaning of Isaac actually is quite interesting. Isaac means will laugh or he, he makes me laugh or he laugh. Now we need to know why is Abraham gave the name Isaac. I believe that both of them decided and also the Lord spoke to them and said you should give his name Isaac. I believe it is the clearly it was the instruction of the Lord as the Bible says it was the instruction of the Lord to keep his name Isaac. Now we need to look at something. Um, why I am saying we need to look at this quite interesting is when the Lord came to Abraham's house when he was in Mamre and uh, three men came and Abraham was there and Abraham saw them, Abraham ran to them and then Abraham ran to them and bowed before them and they came and had food and before they left by this time next year when I come you will have a, Sarah will have a son okay, Zara will have a son now, when they said it, Abraham laughed. Abraham laughed. Not only Abraham laughed, Zerah also laughed. So, both of them laughed when, when God said that you will have a son. So, this is quite interesting that they laughed. So, from the time they heard about this promise, they began to laugh. Now, we could say, why did she, why did they laugh? Um, uh, I would like to say this to you. Just imagine a couple got married. They were not expecting a child, and in nine months the baby is born. They will not laugh. They will say we were not expecting. We were not expecting, but just this happened. Or oh, just imagine. This couple got married and they planned everything perfect. Two and a half years time, then we'll have a child. They waited and two and a half years time, they tried and the child came at three and a half years time. The child came and they will smile. They will not laugh. Laughing happens when the joy is uncontrollable. The laughing happens when joy in our heart is uncontrollable. Two ways we can laugh. Once, one way is when we hear a joke. Okay, when we can laugh. The second is when the joy is uncontrollable, we will laugh. There are two ways, two or three ways people cry. 
Some people cry when they hear a good news. But more than that, when you are sad in your heart, you can cry a little. Your face can go six o'clock like this and you can sit down. That is a cry. But when you are crying out loud, when something is really broken you, you will make cry, you will cry out loud. Now here, Bible says, they named him Isaac. He laughed or you made me laugh. So God actually made them laugh. And that's the reason they gave the name to their child, Isaac. Isaac. Now, it says, uh, and, Abraham, um, and Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, who Zerah bare to him, Isaac. They named him Isaac. Now, we need to look a few things here. For, for Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God has spoken to him. Now, this is where many, many of us struggle in life. We all receive promise from God. We receive lots of promise from God. When I came, even when I was, um, before I came to the UK, people promised, like, when the prophet and prophetess came and said to me in the Holy Spirit that Parmanasse, you will travel to nations, you will have a ministry, you will be settling in another country. And even when I was born, I think just after I was born or sometime, my mother had a wish dream that I am settled in a different country, in, a, in, in, a, in another, another country. So when she had that dream, she never knew when that's going to happen. Number one. When all these prophets and prophetess came to me and said, Pastor Manasseh, you know, at that time they called me Man Brother Manasseh or Manasseh Mone, Manasseh's son. You are going to travel to nations. You will have a ministry. People will heal and these things. I waited. I waited for years. I waited for years. I came to do my master's in the UK. In a bit quite young age, I came to do my master's in the UK. And I waited, thinking that it's going to happen. Started a church, it grew big, lost. Started another English church, it grew very big, lost. Started a Hindi church, it grew big, lost. Started a Malayalam church, grew big, big, lost. So when all these things happened, many of my friends um, who are with me, who are having very small churches, but they are traveling and uh, they just go and don't even preach. Many of them don't even preach or so they travel and I don't even travel. I stay at home. Financial struggle, struggle everywhere, not even able to breathe because of struggle. And at that time, I, I many times asked the Lord, Lord, will there be a day that I will be traveling? Will there be a day that my life will change? It took a long time, a long time for me, more than 10 years, more than 12 years, more than 13 years, more than 14 years for me, actually uh, almost 14 years after coming to the UK for me to begin to travel. Now, that was the set time of God. Now, for God, he keeps his time, and that is your season. Many people don't believe in seasons. Now, we say, for a believer, every time is a season. No, even for a believer, the Lord has a set time. This is your training period. This is your elevation period. This is your restoration period. This is your promotion period. This is your period of jubilee. See, the Lord gives in different ways. Now, when the Lord spoke to Abraham, I just imagine they got married when they were very young, 30 years old. They've been waiting almost 70 years for this to happen. Almost 70 years for this to happen. So the Lord's time frame was almost 70 years. This is where many Bible teachers and preachers and scholars fail. We all preach and talk to others, but when it comes to us, we always complain and murmur and argue with God. God, why is this not happening with me? If you really love me, do it for me. If you don't love me and you tell me, I will walk away from you. We begin to say all these things. But we are not supposed to say it. We have to believe against all hope. But we have to hope and we have to believe what the Lord promised to us will happen. We will not lose our children. They will, be, they will come to faith. Even if they are drug addicts or whatever they are in, or even if they are not studying very well, don't worry. Believe, declare the promises of God and trust in him and believe in him that he will do it at his set time, at his time. 
So then Bible says, and Abraham called the name of his son who, bore, who was born to him, uh, whom Zerah bore to him, Isaac. Then Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight years old, as God commanded him. No, Abraham circumcised, okay, uh, uh, cutting of the foreskin. Abraham did when he was eight years old. So now the question is, how did Abraham know that he had to do it on the eighth day? Because God spoke to him and said, Abraham, this is, this is the mark of covenant that you must carry on your body on a permanent basis. I want you to carry our, the, the, between, a covenant is made between you and me, and I want you to carry, and you want your generation to carry, that mark on your flesh. That mark on your flesh. That mark on your flesh. So uh, the generation comes through where? And the same place the Lord said, you must have a mark knowing that I will bless your generation. And there is the mark I need, and this is the mark I want from you. So Abraham decided, and Abraham heard, Abraham did for himself and all the people in the house, including Ishmael. Now Isaac is born, and the Lord said, you have to do it on the eighth day. Eighth day. Six days the Lord worked. Seven day he rested. Eight day was a new beginning. This is the same thing in here as well. Here also we need to know, six days gone, seven days are gone, eighth day is a new beginning. Also, when we come to the commandments in Leviticus, we see that when a, per, uh, when, when a, when a lady is uh, going through her periods, seven days she must separate and move from, for seven days, but from eighth day she is cleansed. See, for, for the Lord, for many reasons, Eighth day is quite important for him. Eighth day. Seven day is a day of perfection. Seven day, everything was done. Seven day is a day of rest. Seven day is the place where old is gone and everything getting new. Seven day is an important day. Yes, but eight day is a day of new beginning. Eight day is a new day of new beginning. So here also it says you must circumcise. And if you read the Jewish history and them, um, their canon, which is their law, you will be able to find lots of reasons why the Lord asked them to do circumcision on that special place and on the eighth day. But I'm not going to get into details of that because that is not where we are looking into. Now, then Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Now, Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. It says, Abraham was 100 years old. Uh -huh. Now Sarah said, God made me laugh and all who hear will laugh with me. She also said, who would have ever said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? For I have born him a, a son in his old age. If you look at the verse spelling in that, uh, in that one, in born, B-R-O-N-E, which means I, 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 am, I was used by Abraham to carry the blessing. That was the actual meaning uh, in, in Hebrew it meant. A God used Sarah to carry the blessings of Abraham into the, uh, into the earth. Now we are going to look into that again. Now verse 5. Now Abraham was 100 years old when Isaac, his son Isaac was born to him. Okay, and Sarah said, God made me laugh and all who hear will laugh with me. Now, we see in the book of um, Luke, the angel appeared to Mary and said, Mary, you will be with the child because the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And he will be with a child. And then when, when she visited Elizabeth, the baby in Elizabeth's womb jolted or schooled up. Why? Because of the joy. And you also sing a song, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Now here, Bible says, 
Sarah, Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born. Number born to him. Number one. Number two. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh. All who will hear will laugh with me. And then she says, also said, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? For I have borne him a son in his old age. Now, this is something which we need to look into. Many times people say Sarah was beautiful and uh, she, everything was perfectly all right with her. Even when she was 90 years old, she was looking fabulous. The hair was just flying. Her skin was like a baby. No, I don't think in that way. Maybe the Lord has changed it towards the end. But here, if you look at it, we know there was a renewation of their life. When the Lord visited Abraham and Isaac, Abraham and Zerah in the chapter 19, 20, 19, we'll see that. The Lord renewed their life. Lord renewed their strength. For Sarah, the, everything that happens to a woman has completely stopped. She was no more able to bear her child. And Abraham also, almost everything was over. And that's the time the Lord promises. Now, this is where we need to know it doesn't matter what your circumstances are. It doesn't matter what your condition is. It doesn't matter what your opportunities are. It doesn't matter whether you have a visa or not, you are married or not, you have a church or not, you have financial stability or not, you have a job or not, you are health or not. It doesn't matter with God. What matters with God is every word that proceeds out of his mouth. When a word proceeds out of his mouth, what happens? That word brings miracle. Because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. That's what we see. Now, when Sarah said, uh, said who would have uh, said, God had made me laugh, and who will hear, hear me will laugh with me. What Sarah is saying, that I cannot control my laughter. I cannot control my laughter. I was a person who was mourning and crying. And as I'm saying this, let me tell you, if you are a person that is, if you are a person who is crying and worried about your life and you are mourning and complaining and you are sad and broken hearted, at times you sit at home around 11 o'clock in the night and you feel tears flowing through your cheeks, you look at your words, you look at, said, look at your curtain, you look at your Bible, you look at your book, you look empty, you look like lonely, you look that everybody has left you, though no one loves you. In that condition, when you cry, looking at your pathetic condition, when you look at your condition that no one can change, the Lord says, I am the one who will not make you cry anymore, but I'm going to put laughter in you. You are going to have tears, but the tears of joy. You are going to have tears, but the tears of laughter. You, all these years you cried, but I'm going to change your circumstances. I'm going to turn, make a turn around, and I'm going to change your season. When I change your season, you are going to laugh. You are not more going to cry, but you are going to laugh. That's what the Lord is saying here. And that's what Sarah is saying. Sarah is saying, all these years, but the, from the time I got married, people said, are you pregnant? Are you pregnant? Are you pregnant? I heard this and I got tired. When are you getting married? When are you getting married? Why are you not settled? Oh, let me miss you. When will you get settled? Oh, look at you. Look at your hair. It's getting gray. And you are not settled yet. You are not married yet. Will you have a child in this age? You know, all these things people can say. And this was what Zaira was hearing for a long time. It has crushed her heart. And that's the reason to avoid that crushing, she asked Abraham to go and take Hagar as his wife. And now Sarah says, now Zaira says, now, I, I, al I always cried and cried and cried and cried and cried. Now, now, this is no more the time for me to cry. This is the time for me to put my dancing shoes and dance because God has made me laugh. Who made her laugh? Not Abraham, not Isaac, but God made me laugh. God made me laugh twice. Once when he cracked a joke. For me, it was a joke. But for God, it was the truth. I felt it was a joke when the Lord came to Mamre and said, Zerah, you will have a child. 
I thought it is a joke and I laughed because I look at me. I look at my body. I look at my wrinkled faces. I look at my tummy. I look at my structure. And I know I cannot bear a child anymore. Everything that a lady needs to bear a child is completely stopped. And my husband is so too old. It's not going to work. It's impossible. That's what she said. And she laughed because of that. Now she says, God made me laugh again. Why? Because he took my sorrows away and he put, me, put on me a garment of praise. What is this? Because in this old age, when everyone says impossible, God made it possible for me, he gave me a son. Now it says, next verse, which I like a lot. She also said, would have, would, who would have said to Abraham that Zerah would nurse children? That means Sarah was breastfeeding a child at the age of 90. Wow, look at it. Now, people say, Zayla looks so beautiful. Her skin was like 16-year-old. Her breast was like 20-year-old. Oh, she was looking so... See, let me tell you, Zayla and Abraham knew that it is impossible. That means looking at their skin, looking at everything that they have, they knew it's impossible. Now, for us, no, no, this is what we need to know. For us, for us to comprehend and understand, imagine, we think that oh, for Sarah, according to medical science, it's impossible, okay, impossible. So what we will say, according to medical science, if a lady has to give a breastfeeding, her, um, her veins should work in this way, her, uh, uh, every part of her, her breast should work in this way, and her pilopian tube should be here, and uh, her ovary should work perfect, and the seed, when the seed comes in, the X and the seed should come together and they should have the power to work. And now the Abraham seeds are so weak and the seed, X of uh, Zerah has never been produced. So it is not going to work. That's what medical science says. And if a child, when, when, usually when it says after any, any delivery of a child after 40 years old, usually the people say this, medical science says it's a risk. After 40, it's risk. After 45, it's high risk. After 50, it is the highest risk. And after that, they say it's impossible. And uh, they say you have to eat this food and eat that food and you have to take butter and propaganda and uh, olive and this and that and make your skin good. And, you know, so we, we have an understanding in a human way, in a human way, when Sarah was pregnant, when Sarah was pregnant, all her, all her body changed, her, her, her body shape changed, and everything changed. She became, wow, in a beautiful shape. And Abraham became so healthy and strong. And Abraham looking at a 70 year old boy, that's what we think. But that's where the, our, that is our mistake of human comprehension. For us, when we want to receive a miracle, we want to see things, uh, things changing, changing. Let me tell you, even Zaira was all a wrinkled face. Her body was not in shape. She never had a menstruation for many years. No one was producing egg or sperm or egg or seed. Let me tell you, even then, God can produce a child. And that's where your faith should be. If your faith is depending on circumstantial evidence and things that you see, it is impossible for us to receive a miracle. It is impossible. Impossible to receive a miracle. Why it is impossible? It is because we are looking at circumstantial evidence to see. Oh, Abraham says, look at your face. Your face is looking the same, but look at your tummy. Look at your stomach. Your stomach is enlarging. Well, Abraham, I don't think I can breastfeed. Look at my, look at me. It's not going to work. But after delivery, the milk just flows. See, when we look at things in that way, in a catastrophic condition, in a chaos, but God brings beauty out of chaos. He brings things back out of ashes. And that's where we will find the beauty of God. But instead, if we say the Lord changed Zeras, made her so beautiful, made her so fabulous, like 17 year old, 18 year old, and that's the reason. No, we don't have to think in that way. If you want to see things in that way, that is a human comprehension, human mind. That's a human mind. But God is totally different. 
God is totally different. Now, Zera, breast was, Zera was breastfeeding Isaac, okay? And then, in verse 8, so the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast on the same day that Isaac was weaned. Now this says, Abraham conducted a great feast on the same day, on the same day, on the same, not month, not year, not a season, but the same day Isaac was weaned. Now, about the weaning process, we, we, have a, we have a different idea about the weaning process. When I was studying in school, there was a boy um, who was around 11, 12 years old. He used, still used to um, drink mother's uh, breast, feed on mother's breast. 11, he, I think he was around 11 years old. Now, what is a weaning process? Weaning process, you know, in our culture, in Indian culture, many, many ladies, that what they do, when a, when a child is six months old or one year old, they will put some uh, things on, her bre on their breast, so that when the child sucks the breast, the child will feel, oh, it's a bad taste, oh, sour or, uh, or spicy. A child, next time the child comes twice, third time, child will not come. Child will move away from the breast. That is not weaning. That is a forced to weaning process. The child is still ready to feed on the breast. That is not weaning. And, and, uh, but what is weaning? Weaning is child comes to an understanding. Child comes to an age where he says to Dada and Mama or when he comes to an understanding that he, when Mama gives the breast and say, Mom, son, come and drink, he, she, he says, oh, no, enough. He begins to understand it. And that usually happens when a child is five, six, seven, eight years old. Some children may be 10, but usually by four, five, six years old, you, five years old is all done. Usually all, most of the culture, in some culture they will give maybe a little more, but usually three years and after it's done. Now, we, here, when we look at, this is where we not, something I, will, I, want to, I want to explain a little more into it. When Samuel was weaned, Hannah took Samuel into the temple and presented to God and gave it to Eli After, when he was weaned. So that means he was not three years old. He was at least seven to eight years old. He was at least seven to eight years old. Why? Because when he was in a position to hear God calling, and he was in a position to understand what the mother was saying. Mother was saying, son, I have dedicated you to serve the Lord. You have to go there and you have to leave there. And I'm going to take you. The son had the position to understand. In the same way, I believe, I, I, I believe Zera uh, breast, was breastfeeding the child at least for five years. At least for five years. So when Zera was still 95 years old, to me, I, I will say, till Zera was 95 years old, she was breastfeeding Isaac. At this age, she was doing it. So what did Abraham did? Abraham did a fantastic party, a fabulous party. Abraham was so happy. Abraham said, now my son is an, an age of understanding. My son is grown up. Now my son's appetite is changed. Now he can eat meat. He can break the bones. He can eat the fish. He, he, is, a, he is getting to a maturity. He can understand things. Now it also shows that he is my higher. He will take responsibility after me. Whatever I have belongs to him. That was another way of saying during the weaning process, the celebration. Abraham will present the child to everyone and say, this is my seed. This is my child. This is my offspring. And this is the, he is the one who will have all my possession and he will be in charge of everything. And that's the day of weaning. Two things. One, he stopped. That means he is no more a baby, but now he is grown up. No more a baby. He is no more a baby. Now, the Bible says, as a child of the of, of Lord, you have the authority. But if the higher remain as a child, he will be 
controlled by the servants in the house. So what the child has to do? Child has to grow up. In the same way, if the baby is always sucking the mother's breast, the child will always remain as a child. But Isaac, when, when Abraham saw it, Abraham said, now this is the time of party. And he announced in front of everyone, this is my son Isaac, and he will be my hire. He did that. Okay. Now look at the 10 round. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had born to Abraham, scoffing or a mocha. Therefore, she said to Abraham, cast out this bond woman and her son, for the son of this bond woman shall not be higher with my son, namely with Isaac. And the matter was very displeasing in Abraham's sight because of his son. Now we are going to look into it. After the weaning process, Zerah found that son of Hagar, Ishmael, is a man, is a person, he was coughing or he was a mocha. He was making fun. We have to go back. Earlier we saw, Sarah was not getting pregnant. When Sarah was not getting pregnant, Sarah introduced Hagar to Abraham and said, Abraham, I'm giving this woman as your wife, not as a maid, servant, as your wife. You sleep with her and let her have a child. Had a child. And she, got, she conceived. When she conceived, what she did, she got, she, she looked at her mass, uh, look at her, uh, look at Sarah like this. Hmm. Sarah, you've been sleeping with Abraham for all these years. You are his wife. You never got a chance to become pregnant. Look at me. Only even one night. Hmm. So he, she was mocking Sarah. She was making fun of Sarah. She was telling Sarah, Sarah, look at you. You are, look at your age. You are around 75, 80, 80 years plus, 80, almost eight, 75 years old. And you do not have a child. Look at me. I am only 25 or 20 or 30 years old. Look at me. I went with Abraham one night. I am conceived. Look at me. So she was making her mistress, Zerah, look down. She was pushing Zerah down and Zerah got offended. So that means Hagar had a habit or a character of mocking. And that's the same thing that came, came to Ishmael as well. Even though Hagar's son Ishmael is boy living in the house of Abraham, he is not staying with Abraham, I don't believe, because Sarah was not happy about him. So they are outside, and Hagar is the one who is, who is bringing up the child, Ishmael. And when Ishmael look at, uh, when Hagar look at, when Hagar look at Ishmael, she, he is the child of Abraham. And he is also higher to the property and everything that Abraham had. Now, she is not happy that Sarah is having a son. Because when Sarah has a son, what happens? Automatically, all the blessings and property and everything will go to Sarah's son because that is a legal son. Now, Hagar is not happy about it. So Hagar was telling always Ishmael, look at, look at Isaac. He is born at the old age. Look at him. You know, so Hagar was saying this to Ishmael and Ishmael began to make fun of Isaac. Always remember, you can have 10 children. You can have, uh, you can get married and uh, you can adopt 10 children. But when you have your own child, he will begin to love your child more than anybody else. 10 children. You could say that, oh, I will I love every child. I love every child. I love every child. Yes, true. But when you have your own son or daughter, whom you conceive and you bring forth, you will begin to love that child more than any child in the world. More than any child in the world. That's guaranteed. That's guaranteed. We might say, no, I child every child the same way. No, you will not. You cannot. Very rarely people have that. Very rarely. You can love a child almost equal to your child. No problem. But when an adopted child 
begin to make fun of your own child, then you will say, aha, no. No. Nope. That's not possible. My child, my blood, that comes in. So now, when Hagar was having a child, Ishmael, all these years, Zerah was okay. But when Ishmael began to make fun, began to mock, he was a mocker. And he was, he was coughing. When he began to do that to Isaac, Sarah got offended. And one more thing. This is something we don't understand. When there is a scoffing or mocker here, he was saying, he was, I strongly believe this, Hagar and Ishmael was trying to get the property and everything from Abraham to their side. Hagar would have been saying to Ishmael and to, Hagar, and to Abraham, this is my, your child, Abraham. This is your child. You should give him them. You should, you should give him everything because he's your firstborn, not Isaac. He is your firstborn. And Ishmael being with Abraham for all these years, almost 20 years plus, 21, 22 years now. So Ishmael also will be saying, Ishmael also will be saying to Abraham, Daddy, I am your firstborn. You should give him to me. Look at your little one. How, what can he do? He's only a little one. He's like a lamb. He is feeble. How, what can he do? And so he, they were not happy with Isaac. And they were trying to take the position, the possession, the property, everything away from Abraham. And they were trying to get in the heart of Abraham. And Zerah understood it. Zerah understood it. And Zerah said, and Zerah said to uh, Abraham, therefore she said to Abraham, cast out this bond woman and her son. For the son of this bond woman shall not be her with my son, namely with Isaac. No. It's all changes. Earlier, Zerah is the lady who gave Hagar as wife to Abraham. Now Zerah is saying she is no more your wife, but a bond woman. If she is your wife, you have a covenant with her. You cannot break it. Even if you break it, there are procedures to follow. But because she is a bond woman, you have no procedures. You can do anything you want to do. You can do anything that you want to do. Zera is no more thinking Hagar as Abraham's wife, or Zera is not even considering Ishmael as Abraham's son. In, in the eyes of Zerah, Hagar is out, Ishmael is out. But in the eyes of Abraham, Ishmael is his firstborn, Ishmael is his own blood, Hagar is his wife. Now there's a big conflict, big conflict in the family. Who invited all this? Zerah invited all this. Who is suffering now? Sarah and Abraham are suffering and Hagar and Ishmael is suffering. So this is a time where no one can do anything because there is a conflict, there is arguments, there is suffocation. Abraham have no idea what to do. He have no choice to take any decision. Now, Sarah saying, you must cast out this bold woman. She, he say, she says, you must not keep her here. You must throw her out. For the son of this bond woman shall not her with my son. So when she says that word, shall not be her with my son. That means Ishmael and Hagar was, were trying to be hires with Abraham's sons, Isaac. So they were saying that if Isaac is having blessings, we also should have. That's the reason I said on the day of weaning, when Abraham called everyone, Abimelech and Fecal, the, uh, the army chief and everyone, he announced that Isaac will be my heir. Now, Ishmael was not happy about it. Hagar was not happy about it. They began to make issues. They began to say, no, we must have our position. He is also your son. I am your wife. I am the one who bore your child first. The issue began to come. So Sarah understood this is the right time that I should step in. And I should take a decision. So Sarah says to Abraham, throw her out. Now, Abraham was sad. And the matter was very displeasing in Abraham's sight because of his son. Which son? Ishmael. 
So, and the matter was very displeasing in Abraham's sight because of his son. Because of his son. For Abraham, Ishmael was Abraham's son. For Sarah, Abraham, Ishmael is nobody's son. If for Zerah, in the beginning, Ishmael was yes to an extent, but now he is no more a son, no more a slave. He is outcast. Get out of my house because I don't require you. I don't need you. I don't see, want to see your face. I want to see Isaac. Isaac is only one before me. I cannot have Ishmael. He is a mocker. He is a scoffing person. And look at Hagar. He is all, she is jealous. She is proud. She is complaining. She is arguing. She is trying to take away my blessings. I will not allow it. Sarah changed. Now, Abraham is in confusion. For Abraham, it is his seed. It is his son. And Hagar was his wife. For Hagar, he can throw away. He doesn't mind about throwing away Hagar, but he cannot throw away the son because it is his blood. He was looking after Ishmael all these years, almost 20, 21 years at, at least. Number one. Number two, when the Lord came to Abraham and said, Abraham, I will give you a son. Abraham said, no, Lord, no need. Give me Ishmael. Let him stay in front of me. That's all I know. I'm happy with Ishmael. Ishmael is a good son. Ishmael is a good son. I am happy with him. But here, well, we are not we are just going to read it, but we are going to look into it not today. We'll look at it next week. But God said to Abraham, do not let it be displeasing in your sight because of the lad, because of your born woman. Whatever Zerah has said to you, listen to her voice. In Isaac, you, her seed, shall be called. Yet I will also make a nation of the son of bond woman, because he is your seed. Now here, I will say two or three points, then we are going to pray. Number one, the Lord accepted what Zaira said. Why? Because Sarah did not say, throw the woman away. Sarah said, don't throw the son away. Sarah said, he, is, he cannot be higher. He cannot be the higher with us. The, Zerah had a valid point. Here what Zerah is saying is a very valid point. Zerah is not saying, I am jealous. I am upset. I am angry. You sleep with her or you slept with her or you are giving him gift. No, Zerah had no point, pro problem with those things. Zerah is happy with all those things. Zerah had no issues. But the only problem Sarah had, that when the promise came, when the covenant of the Lord came, she doesn't want a weed to grow with the harvest. Please understand this way. She doesn't want a weed to grow with the harvest. If a weed is growing with the harvest, when the time harvest comes, Weed also will be collected. Weed also will stay there. When the real harvest comes, if the weed is there, it is so difficult. So she said, this is the time we have sown the seed. And if you look at it, look at it. The seed that we sow, the wheat is only this little high. But the weed is very high. Weed is very high. We cannot have the weed. So pluck the weed away. Otherwise, it will destroy the seed. It will destroy. It will not give us a harvest. It will be difficult for us. Zera was looking far ahead. And Abraham was looking here with, with love in his heart. So the Lord looked at it. And the Lord said, listen to Zera what she said. Why? Because... See, Sarah been complaining earlier. Sarah is the one who bought Hagar, and Sarah is the one who bought uh, who bought uh, hey, Ishmael, and Sarah is the one who did all these things. Sarah did those things. Sarah was did was complete blunders, complete blunders. I want to tell you something here. Listen to this: complete blunders. Sarah did the biggest mistake in life. But. When Sarah, Abraham was going to sleep with Hagar, Abraham was able to, Abraham should have been displeased. 
and say, I will not sleep with Haitha. How dare you say that? But Bible never says that. But here, here, when Sarah said, throw him out, Abraham was displeased. Abraham was displeased. So that means in the first place, when Abraham was introduced to Hagar, Abraham was not displeased. Abraham took it okay. It was let me please her. But now his love is divided between two children, Ishmael and Isaac. One is a promised child. One is a mistake child. The Lord cannot allow a mistake child to be with the promised child. God cannot allow you to love bad thing and good thing. Bible says you cannot keep your feet on two boats. You cannot serve two masters. In the same way, God is telling Abraham, Abraham, listen to your wife Sarah in this. Why? What she is telling is true. You cannot have two hires, only one. Because whoever I have given the covenant with, only that person can become who you hire, not everybody. I told you that I will give you a son through your wife Sarah, and he should be Isaac. And in him only I can bless you, not through Ismail. So what you should do, listen to your wife. What she is saying is true. This time you must listen to your wife. Earlier the Lord did not say that. Lord allowed it. But here this time Lord did not allow Abraham to keep the child. Because the Lord knew that child must go out. The child must go out. The Lord has no other thing. The Lord spoke to Abraham and said, and said very clearly and said, um, whatever Sarah said to you, listen to her voice. Because Sarah looked at the future and like Sarah saw the difference between two, between Isaac and Ishmael. And Sarah understood that Ishmael is not a nice guy. He's a scoffer. And he is a mocker. And Abe Zerah said, no, he cannot live in my house. He must go out. Because he is making not fun of me or you, but he is making fun of our promise. He is, he is trying to he is trying to destroy the blessing that the Lord has given us. He is trying to destroy. He is he's speaking against the blessing. And when Abe God, and then God said, listen to Sarah. See, this is where we need to know that the Lord heard Zerah as well, Zerah's desire as well. Abraham was not able to understand it is because of his deep love for Ishmael. But that's the time the Lord has to speak through somebody. And the Lord spoke through Zerah. And, and then once he heard it, the Lord said, Abraham, listen to what Zerah says. Otherwise, they'll have, Abraham will not do it. Abraham will keep him inside. But the Lord never wanted him to keep him inside. And uh, then it says, finally, this one. The, here, the Lord is not calling Hagar as Abraham's wife. The Lord is calling Hagar as a bond woman. In the beginning, Hagar was taken as the wife of Abraham. But the Lord never allowed or accepted that marriage. God never allowed or accepted that relationship. See, in our life also, there are relationships that the Lord has not accepted. In our life, there are things that we are doing the Lord is not happy with, which we don't understand many times. But I pray the Lord will open your eyes to understand it here. The Lord was not happy with it. And the Lord said, you know, she is a born woman. She is not your wife. Because the Lord has not spoken. See, the Lord was speaking to Abraham in everything. It was so clear. This is where we need to know. The Lord was speaking to Abraham in everything so clear. But in the matter of Hagar, the Lord did not speak to him. But he, he heard to Zerah, no to the Lord. Now the same Zerah who spoke to him is saying this. And now the Lord said, listen to Zerah. If he had listened to the Lord in the beginning, he would not have gone with Hagar. Then he, will not, he, know, he doesn't need to listen to Zerah. Now because he listened to Sarah in the beginning, now he has to listen to Sarah again. If he had listened to God in the beginning, he will listen to God now also. He, there is no need for him to listen to Sarah. But because he listened to Sarah earlier, now he has to listen to Sarah. Now Sarah is saying, throw him and throw her out and the child. And the Lord says, listen to Sarah. Abraham, she gave you the permission and she is now taking it away. I love her. Because I also know that what the child is, is not right. In our life also sometimes, dear friends, things we know that we are not doing right. 
we are keeping things which are not right. See, if the Lord has spoken to you something, the Lord has given you a covenant, and a promise, hold on to it. Don't leave it. Don't leave it. Whatever people say, even if you have run away from your house, if you have to leave alone, hold on to the promise that the Lord has given you. Let me tell you, he will bless you in that. The world might say, you are not good. You have done the worst thing in your life. Let it be. But the Lord will still bless you. When, the, when Abraham threw Hagar out, everyone will say to Abraham, Abraham, you did the biggest mistake. You should have done it. But the Lord has no issue with it. The Lord had no issue with it. Because the promise of God was not through Hagar. It was through Zera and Isaac. Let's close our eyes and let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. Thank you for giving us this wonderful time to be in your presence. You heard us. You spoke to us. We pray that if there is any Hagar that we are holding in our life, Lord, it may not be a woman, Lord, but it may be a character. It may be, it may be something that we cannot throw out. It may be something that we are attached to. It may be something we are, maybe with a, which, which you are not allowed, but we are holding on to. But Lord, I ask, we ask you to forgive us and give us the grace to understand what we need in our life. And Lord, there are, co there are covenants that you have made with us. And you spoke so clearly, I'm going to give this to you. I'm going to do this with you. I'm going to do that for you. And I believe, and we believe, oh Lord, that will happen. And whatever is not right, you will remove. And whatever is right, you will give it into our life and you will bless us. And now we humble ourselves and we give us into your hands. Be with us, bless us. Each and everyone who have joined today, Lord, I give each and every one of them into your hands. And I ask you, oh Lord, your name will be glorified. In Jesus' wonderful, mighty, powerful, glorious name, Father God, we ask this prayer. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless you. Thank you for tuning in.